Okay folks, uh, just a little bit different than what we've been covering so far with the law, I would just like to expand on the reason why the elites are um, sodomites. Um, what we're going to do is go through an interview between Marion Knox and Elana Freeland. Um, I put this together in June 2016. And I've noted it's being picked up at the moment um, and spread quite profoundly. So I thought we might just have a look at it uh, as a video. So I'm going to just recite the interview as it is. So obviously the question has begun by Eleanor. So she says, Marion, where I want to start is with your statement that the presence of Elohim spirits usually indicates a Freemasonic programming that is installed by sodomy. Does that ring a bell? And Marion responds, Yes, it does, and I would like to broaden that a little bit. Ron Patton once did an article on monarch programming. Based on what you might call research, or what I have discovered in maybe 500 people over a period of 10 years. I'm just guessing because I do not keep records. This is my impression. The most vulnerable age for preparing a person for mind control is between 2 and 4 years of age because of the development of the child's mind at that age. Traumatic things can damage them worse than if they were younger or older. Also, in order to, pro to be programmable, there needs to be a change in the way their mind works between the age of two and four. That change can only be achieved by sodomy. What is it about sodomy that does that? It attacks the nerves at the base of the spine and causes something neurological to happen within the brain. It also has a spiritual demonic component to it that affects the person's mind in a way that nothing else will, as near as I can tell. In other words, I would state it this way. For a person to be able to develop multiple personalities, they would have to be sodomized between two and four. And Ellen asks, for all multiple personality disorders. As far as I know, it's not commonly told this way because sodomy puts in a deaf and dumb spirit and causes memory loss. So that some people may remember occult rituals, but won't remember the sodomy. But sodomy is the foundation of the whole thing. It is called the Key of David by the Rothschild Illuminati. When you say Rothschild Illuminati, you're not talking about just the Rothschild family. No, I'm talking of all occult people all over the world. This goes back to Nimrod. This is the Egyptian initiation of the child to open the third eye. Are you saying that back in Egypt, in 3000 BCE, when the priesthood was at its peak, they were using sodomy for their initiations? As far as I know, sodomy is always used in the occult, going clear back before the flood. Sodomy is Satan's sex or Satan's new birth of the child. I don't believe anybody can become fully illuminated unless they have been sodomized at around three years of age. If they wait to touch that person until they are 10, 12 or 15 years old, they will never be successful and fully illuminated because you can only open the, you can't open the third eye after about the f age of five or six. The third eye meaning the pineal gland between the eyes? Yes, I have traced migraine headaches from anal sex. It comes up through the spine, over the back of the head, right into the forehead. All migraines or, no, I'm not saying all migraine headaches are from sodomy because I had one once that was put on me by a retired chiropractor and he did not sodomize me, but I think he was a sodomite. Basically, Satan cannot so sodomize someone on his own, but he can influence somebody to sodomize someone else. And that's it, like having Satan sodomize them and put the sodomy power within them. Sodomy is spiritual. I get intense about this because it's so clear and the Bible is the best source for discovering this. So Eleanor asks another question regarding Illuminati and Rothschild. Let's leave Rothschild out of this. Not everybody is Rothschild unless you are using Rothschild as a loose term like Illuminati. With Illuminati referring to the wider spectrum, there is a Rothschild element and a Masonic element, but probably as sinister as any is the Jesuit element. 
I cannot prove this. I wish I could. But I believe that to become a fully fledged Jesuit, you must have had to have been sodomised by the time you were three years of age. I believe they are all sodomised. The entire Society of Jesus? I don't think you can become a powerful in the Society of Jesus without being involved in sodomy at some point in time. Marion, when you say the third eye, I think of the ability to see visions, to see things we normally can't. Is that what you're talking about? To make a mystic with those capabilities requires sodomy because sodomy changes the way the mind works. It opens the mind up to the spirit world. So it's the same effect on male or female children. Absolutely. And you never know what the effect is going to be. One might be one way and one another. But to be able to become a mystic, whether it's Catholic mystic or any other kind of mystic, that is the route to go. I call that the Legion mindset. Eleanor asks, let's go back to the Elohim and the Legion. What are the differences? The Legion mindset has the strong man spirit in it. It's like the house of the strong man. Its foundation can develop into a mystic or into multiple personalities. The Legion mindset will be what Alice in Wonderland is all about. The Elohim spirit is just one small item. But they're inserted through sodomy as well, asks Eleanor. Yes, I think the spirit called Elohim in people who've gone through Masonic ceremonies ceremonies enters with sodomy but the word Elohim in the Old Testament is actually a good word not always because the word means spirit I think if you check the original when Samuel came up the witch of Ender said she saw the Elohim coming up so she saw the spirit coming up not God Almighty in the occult world they have many Elohim what do you think that Wicca's magic circle has the name Elohim and Adonai do you think that's God Almighty? I don't think so. So they may have spirits that are stand-ins for other. Basically, the sodomy spirit would call themselves the I am spirits. When you have someone who is a sodomy spirit, that sodomy spirit claims to be God. So then it's just the next step to use the names that we associate with God. Mormonism says that Elohim had sex with Mary to birth Jesus. Do you think that was all God? mighty god i don't think so joseph smith was a peepstone geezer a uh, gazer he had the third eye open he was a molester had been a mason and copied masonic ceremonies for temple ceremonies eleanor asks from what you have learned from the people you have deprogrammed you don't like that word do you you can use the word deprogramming but it is used in circles that are not christian and basically a lot of what they call deprogramming is reprogramming I like to think of it as changing a mindset, but go ahead and ask your question. I'm trying to establish a relationship between the Illuminati and Freemasons. Okay, in the true sense of the word, Illuminati is a class of people that have illumination in common. In the political sense, you might have people who have joined an organisation called the Illuminati, like being a Democrat or a Republican. But in the true sense of the word, the Illuminati refers to enlightened or illuminated ones. And Eleanor asks, and, and they can be from any brotherhood or organisation? Yes. And they have gone through some sort of initiation for that. In a spiritual sense, they have been illuminated or initiated into the illumination of Lucifer. The initiation into the light of Lucifer is achieved by sodomy of the three-year-old. However, if that person does not follow through, he can become a dud. He doesn't go anywhere. He hasn't really risen to any rank within the movements of the body of the Illuminati. They have certain degrees associated with being a high-level Illuminati. You wouldn't get there simply by being initiated as a three-year-old. The initiation of the three-year-old is the beginning requirement of someday rising up into the ranks of a group that is considered to be the Illuminati. A lot of people think that the Illuminati is being a, a political group of people. But in another sense, it's a brotherhood of sodomites that's like family. When you say like family, are some blood related and most not? I'm saying sodomites feel a family bond, whether related or not. 
Eleanor asks, sodomite, illuminati or otherwise. Is sodomy ritually continued after three years old? Let me try to explain it this way. Who is the bride of Christ or who is the church? Everybody who is truly born again is in the kingdom or family of God, right? Um, that is the church, right? But when you've got Methodists, Baptists, Nazarenes and all these different groups, the Illuminati is Lucifer's church, the mystical body of Satan. Is sodomy like communion for them? No, sodomy is like being born again. Do they do it over and over? Yes, but especially in intense programming like monarch or mind control programming, sodomy is used over and over and over. Those who have programmers or keepers, they're using sodomy all the time to keep the person in line. Is sodomy a threat or is it pleasurable to the, to be sodomite, to the sodomized? Those who have been programmed have a locked-in three-year-old mindset, which is the core of the programming. So they're 18 or 20 years old and somebody comes up and knows the signal or says the code word to call out the three-year-old core. The person then goes into the three-year-old state to be sodomized. Then the sodomites program into their minds what they want to program in. When that person wakes up, they probably don't even remember that anything happened. Basically, a person reverts back to the three-year-old to be a total victim to the sodomy. There are many ramifications of this. If you read the book by Cathy O'Brien, she says that a high-level politician gave her messages to take to the king of Saudi Arabia. The politician would access her sex altar, repeat the message, bring her out of that sex altar, sh ship her overseas, and when she got there, the king would access her sex altar and get the message word for word, from the high level politician and return an answer. That basically is a picture. She didn't say it was sodomy, but that's what they do. Sodomy puts them into a trance where you can program in directly to the subconscious memory file without any interference of the conscious mind. Sodomy is what puts the person into that state where you can do it. They might even get them so highly programmed that they can just say the word or repeat the code. Can you use sodomy for programming after childhood? You can program a 50 year old person with sodomy. But would you have to have had it done at least once when they were small? To get a mind control slave, yes. You can take a 20 year old person and make a mind control slave out of them by waiting until they're 20 years old to do it. To program them like TV and movies do, you could not make a monarch program person if you hadn't started with them as a child. Have victims actually used the word monarch to describe their programming? One of the people I work with came up with the idea that the wings of the monarch butterfly are actually the pelvic skeletal shape. Then if you add sodomy, you add the abdomen of the butterfly. The other thing about monarch would be that these people are told they are royalty or chosen ones. Given that a lot of bloodline families in power in the United States claim to be descendants of European royalty or descendants of monarchs, you could look at it that way. I say that monarch programming is basically sodomy programming. Some people are kept in bondage by sodomizing themselves. Sodomy is used to reboot the computer and reactivate the programming. Do you think this is at all behind the big push to accept homosexuality as normal? Of course. Do you think all homosexuals are sodomized early? I do not think that very many homosexuals become homosexual without being sexually abused early. They may not all have been sodomized, but a large portion were. As far as religions go, Catholics and Masons are at the top of the list. It's possible that Catholic hierarchy may even have an unofficial doctrine to sodomise three-year-olds so that, so to bind them to the church. They say, give us a child until he's five and he'll always be Catholic. But they don't stay, start any religious training with the children until they are five. I recently freed a guy who was sodomised by a priest when he was probably three and then at thirteen. Was put into Boys Town in Nebraska, and the priest there would take him into a room, lock the doors, and make him do whatever he wanted him to do. What about Skull and Bones, Scroll and Key, fraternities of elite sons? Do you suppose they're using sodomy as well to make deep bonds for the sake of money and power in the families? 
I can't imagine they haven't. What is Skull and Bones anyway but the Order of Death? Why are they doing things connected with the dead? Sodomy is the biggest occult power source there is. So how did they get their power without it? I was not there. I was never invited to go there. I could not have gone there because I was never a victim of sodomy as a child. Now, the Masons do recruit people who are innocent bystanders just for the image and the Jews. But the real driving force of the Masons are sodomites. Just check the Dimole thing. Tell me a little bit more about the deep bond that forms among men because of sodomy. Let me tell you a little story. I've been trying to help a woman for the f last five years to get free of the bondage and victimisation that began when she was a child. She was married to a guy who was wealthy and works for Nike and is also a cross-dresser. I even met with the cross-dresser and uncovered that his grandpa was a mason who treated him like a little girl and sodomised him. This was from his mind, not mine, but he didn't want to believe it and get right. They have four children and he's been sitting there with the damage to the children. She'd been trying to get something to pin on him, like his pornography on the internet, but he always lied his way out of everything. I called her out of the blue the other day and she had filed for divorce, but still didn't have anything on him. So I said, do you suppose you might have a spirit of his, like the strong man? So I checked it out and the answer came from her mind was that the spirit of her husband had entered her on her wedding night by sodomy. All she can remember is that the wedding night was a bad night. I cast it out. She had a bright red rash on her when we were talking about this. But when I cast out the strong man's spirit with her husband's name, put in with sodomy, within minutes the rash was completely gone. Within the week she happened to be at her husband's new house where her daughter was, and the daughter said, let me show you something. They went into a, a big walk-in closet where there was a suitcase with another locked suitcase in it. The daughter got the key, opened up the little suitcase and there were women's paraphernalia, lingerie, even the tool to sodomise himself. She could not find any evidence on that guy until I got rid of that spirit of sodomy from him. Her eyes and the daughter's eyes were opened. Sodomy has a spiritual component in it that is far more sinister than anybody recognised. It is the most underrated evil power to the general public. But to the people who are in the know, they know that this is the ultimate rebellion against God himself. This is what they hope to use to gain the whole human race for their side and defeat God himself. I'm convinced you're right. For both my control and male bonds of power, sodomy is somehow key. What about another brotherhood? The special forces, navy seals, green berets, elite cadres. From what I can gather, I believe they are chosen because the men start out as victims, as three-year-olds. I worked to help get a guy free whose mother ran a topless bar down in California and had a tremendous internal rage. He didn't do very well in school and he had a, his problems with drugs, but a guy came along and gave him a full ride for four years at West Point. He should never have gotten in there. He went into the football scholarship, but when they got him in there, they switched him into boxing scholarship. Because when he got into boxing, the rage could be turned on. He heard that some of the initiations coming up in the second West Point year included sodomy. I don't know that they subjected him to sodomy, but he quit before he went more than one year. Just like in war, where traumatic things happen that soldiers can't remember, this is what sodomy does to the child. The denial system that kicks in produces, at least in some people, the ability to compartmentalise. When you compartmentalise, you can be in a certain compartment of your mind without detracting from other compartments of your mind. If you're in the pure rage compartment, you don't have any kindness or love diluting it. Now, I'll just break on the interview there and just explain that the Spartans of the three of the film 300 fame... The way the Spartans created super warriors was to sodomise their bodies at between two and four. And the rage and the entity that's created in the rage, that is what they manipulated into the super warrior. So this, this sodomy is, is rife, it's everywhere. And a lot of people out there, you, you know, don't necessarily remember that this has taken place when they were children. Um, it's important that we understand how these uh, occult orders use 
this format in order to control people. Back to the interview. Eleanor asks, so in the profiling that the military might use in order to find a man who fits the untapped rage pattern, I could make a profile. I could take a few victims that are healed and sit them down beside me and we would bring the people through an interview and we could profile them. Eleanor asks, why do I think this programming through sodomy acts so much more powerfully on males than on females? It doesn't. But males and females are different. Females are best for becoming program computers or human recorders. Most women are more capable of creating multiple personality systems because of the way their minds work. But the fact is that men are more aggressive. So the percentage of women who are sodomized and become perpetrators is far lower than the percentage of men who become perpetrators. They're all victims to start with, but women just go on being victims. They do not tend to turn into perpetrators themselves. I've worked with men who did not become perpetrators and remain victims, just like the women. And I've seen evidence of women who become perpetrators. Witches are perpetrators, and just like men, they're molesters. I've worked with people who had women sodomizing them with objects, molesting children. But the percentage is lower with women than it is men. A higher percentage of men will be transitioned from victim to perpetrator and I am convinced that there are some men who compartmentalise in such a way that they do not, on the average, remember acts of molesting. They will only remember if they get into that compartment. Otherwise, they have amnesic barriers between the different compartments of their minds. Women are that way too. A perpetrator with an amnesic barrier is a sad, sad case because they can switch into that compartment and go out and molest and then switch out and not remember. This is the kind of person they use in special forces for their assassination teams because they can activate the hidden compartment that has been programmed for assassination and send them out on a mission. A man who claimed to have been in South Africa special forces told me of two cases where he was sent to assassinate one in a national park in South Africa and one in London. Again, just to break from the uh, the interview, uh, Kay Griggs, excellent uh, lady who did uh, about four hours worth of interview explaining the Cherry Marines, specifically in relation to her husband, George Griggs. Seek that out. Very important if you want to understand special forces and its relationship to sodomy. We continue. Eleanor asks, so sodomy doesn't need to be used. The trigger word can be used to activate that compartment. I don't know. I think that they could use sodomy and make them forget the whole thing. People have been sodomized and they couldn't remember for three or six months after it happened. We didn't know what was wrong with them and then later found out somebody took them out and sodomized them. Sodomy is a spiritual thing. Let's say Ben sodomizes either a man or a woman. When he does that, the person has a spirit by the name of Ben that changes the way that person relates to things. This can even be as an adult. You can put the Legion mindset in when they're 40 years old, but you can put Ben in when they're 40 years old and it will change the way the person thinks. I have had different women who separated from abusive husbands and for some reason couldn't break loose of the soul tie to their husband. But when we cast out the sodomy spirit by the husband's name, their feelings about their ex-husbands changed. The most classic example is a lady who had slept with her husband before they were married, committed adultery at 40 years of age, and when I commanded the strong man to give its name, it was her husband's name that entered at 40, when he sodomised her. That spirit of sodomy was more damaged to her than the spirit of adultery or fornication. What is the relationship between sodomy and the house of the strongman? If a person is sodomized, the strongman spirit that Jesus spoke of will be the spirit of the sodomy. It's actually an unclean spirit and a familiar spirit with the name of the person who did the sodomy. So when you sodomize a three-year-old, you build a dollhouse with the three-year-old trapped inside. And every time that person is sodomized from that point on, a strongman enters. So let's just say Joseph sodomized the child. Now Joseph and the three-year-old child are in the lot, in the house locked, in the core of the mind. Along comes Jack and sodomizes the girl later. Now there's Joseph, the child, and Jack. Then comes Ben later. Then comes Sterling. Then comes Red. 
Then comes a guy and that guy. You've got a whole legion of sodomites and every one of them has a name, which means that you've got many spirits of the sodomites in the house of Joseph, the strong man, the original sodomizer. You're being literal when you say spirit, that the disassociation that creates multiples is the entry of one spirit after another. Well, some people would like to say that multiple personalities are not spirits. I would like to say that the whole multiple mindset is a demonic mindset, basically a legion style mindset of many. The same as the man in Mark 5 said, my name is Legion for we are many and Jesus released them all at once. For the benefit of anybody who was looking on, 2,000 pigs went crazy and drowned while the man was again clothed and in his right mind. So basically all of his legion of spirits, multiple personalities or anything you want to call them, all were gone and his mind was right. The whole multiple mindset is a strong mindset. It's a fantasy world mindset. But it's not necessarily possession by demonic spirits. If you get rid of every demon that multiple personality people have, they would no longer be multiple. Now that's profound. So, therapists who entertain certain helpers or child alters to remain, they're not doing a service to the person. The person can't get free as long as they have any of that left because their mind is not working like God intended it to work. So with each sodomy, the house of the strong man gets stronger and stronger. That's right. Eleanor asks, With a believer, who can accept that Jesus can deliver them all at once? You have been able to free people from the house of the strong man. I've had it happen on quite a number of occasions. Not every time. There's sometimes, there's sometimes that I never did get them to leave. Eleanor asks, With non-believers or believers as well? Well, the people who said they were believers... But it's possible to have a compartment in your mind that's a believer and another compartment that is a sodomite. So what are you? A lot of people do not believe me when I say that you can cast out the strong man, the child and all of the multiple system at once. But I've done it by the grace of God. Jesus did it and others have done it. So why would I spend my time with some lesser kind of benefit if I already know that the ultimate goal is to achieve what I just described? I had a man once who was crazy. He had worked for 12 years to try and free, get free, but was ready to kill his wife. He couldn't work his marriage. He couldn't work, his marriage was on the rocks, and he was at the point of being committed. Somebody told him about me, and I finally found a spot for him to come. I didn't know anything about him. I met with him one day, uncovered that Joseph was the strong man, that he was a Rothschild bloodline, and that he had they had used him as a male prostitute, sodomised him as a boy in rituals to get the power of the bloodline. I cast the whole thing out in one day. He didn't talk to me again for two years. He got well. He's still well. Two years later, he and his wife came and told me the good things that had happened. He went to his 6,000 member church to give his testimony of getting well and they wouldn't even let him use my name because they had believed negative propaganda about me. He could give his testimony, but all he could say was that he met with a man. I couldn't use my name. I asked him, what, what, I, what is it that I do that's different from the rest? He said, they went after the stronghold, you went after the strong man. That, again, is very, very pertinent. And it, it does give uh, credence to those exorcist people, the people that carry out exorcists. It's all the same stuff as this. Eleanor asks, when you find out the name of the strong man is Joseph, are you thinking it's Mengele? No, Joseph Mengele was the biggest Joseph in the last half of the 20th century. But the name Joseph came out of the Jesuits and has been around since the 1500s. It started with devotion to the husband of Mary, whom they call St. Joseph. And it became a symbol of the father of the system. The sodomizing father that cares for his children. When a man sodomizes a child at three, the child bonds to that man as if it were their father. And when he's a man of the cloth, the church, the bond, the child bonds with the church too. This sodomy thing has been around for hundreds of years. Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, was a Catholic mystic. He had had to have been sodomized. 
He was the guy who headed up the Inquisition to persecute those who didn't adhere to the tenets of the Catholic faith. Terribly cruel. How could you be that cruel if you don't have the sodomy rage? The torture they put people through. Later, Joseph Mengele developed the programming and brought it up to another level. He was a Catholic altar boy. I think he was also a Rothschild and a Jesuit. The founder of the Illuminati was Adam Weishaupt, trained as a Jesuit. Eleanor asks, sodomy stands behind multiplicity. I haven't found anybody who was just sexually fondled and became a multiple. I've never found anybody who went through occult rituals without sodomy. So I can't tell you whether being put through a sacrificial ritual without sodomy makes a multiple. People are trying to say that would be the case. That the ritual murders and sacrifices are traumatic enough to produce MPD. Nothing wrong with marrying, buying and selling every civilization, does it? What's the common denominator, denominator of these three times? We have more sodomy now out in the open than we've ever had. Lot was in Sodom. That's where the word sodomy comes from. It meant anal sex, or as they're calling it now, anal intercourse. What other kind of sex do you think they could produce on those angels that they tried to break the door down to get in? They wanted to get their supernatural power. The belief in the occult world is if you could sodomize God, you'd get God's power. You become as gods through sodomy. That's the way the Greek gods became gods. Alexander the Great was a great sodomizer and his Greek army was the most fierce. Hitler tried to pattern his SS on and military after the Greek warriors using sodomy. When you put that all together, the civilizations that God wiped out boiled down to the practice of sodomy. By the way, I've always found that a lot of people's hemorrhoid problems came from sodomy. I just want to break again there from the interview. Because when you studied the Byzantine uh, aspect of Rome, the Byzantine Christianity was run under the Greek canon law, not Roman canon law. And you can see that through the Jesuits, uh, who were the Templars reborn, by the way, because they're doing exactly the same method methodology to create the Brotherhood, which is sodomy. Um, you, in my opinion, the Byzantine power structure uh, was showing itself to be moving within Roman Christianity. And today, of course, we've got a, a plethora of sodomites. We've got it being promoted everywhere. And this, in my opinion, comes through the House Komnene, which are Jewish. And they were, you could say, the final power in Byzantium before it was merged with uh, the Islamic Caliphates. So there is an interconnection from Byzantium between um, the Islamic orders and the Byzantian Jewish Greek canon law aspect that was old Rome. It would be pretty obvious to me that that is what has taken over uh, today's Vatican. It's the, the Greek canon law overturning the Roman canon law. This is why we need to cease attacking what is our foundation and the, the Roman canon law and understand that, that it's actually been overtaken by something else. And if we look at the Greek canon, we can start to see that it's the Hellenistic uh, aspect to uh, the global power structure that's being changed today that's sort of superseded now our ancient foundation and the Roman canon law. <clears throat> and these are important because everybody still runs and attacks the Vatican. Well, the Vatican and the overseer of the canon law. People really need to understand that. Eleanor asks, so sodomy is a lot more common than people give it credit for. Now they're putting sodomy pornography on the internet. I met a lady who had a webcam set up in her home for the internet and would sodomise herself in the nude for the guys out there to watch. She had been a church secretary. Is sodomy the connecting link between Satanism, Freemasonry and other groups including Jesuits? You remember Alistair Crawley. He was a 33 degree Mason. I talked to Bill Schnornblem one time and asked him, where did the Masons get the sodomy? And he said it came by Alistair Crawley from Black Magic Hinduism. Well, that isn't the only place it came from. Have you run across more satanic stuff now? It seems rife. Or has it always been around about the same amount? 
As far as American society is concerned, it's increasing. As far as masonry and certain elements they call black masonry, it's been around all the time. I don't use the term Satanism quite as much because the Masons would be more Luciferian than Satanist. What is the difference between Satan and Lucifer? Same person, but Jesus said Satan comes either as an angel of light or as a, or as a roaring lion. Satanism is the roaring lion principle. Luciferianism is the angel of light principle. Basically, in masonry, the white and black checker floor is the light and dark balancing factor. In the Bible, sodomy is translated as uncleanness. In Job 3, 6, 13, 14, it says that hypocrites in heart die young and live among the unclean. If you take what's in the margin of the King James or New King James and reread the verse, it would read like this. The hypocrites in heart, their souls die and they live amongst the sodomites. Sodomy kills the soul destroys the soul. Romans 1 describes the root to having a reprobate mind. It's a progression. And he says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonour their own bodies between themselves. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but of pleasure in them that do them. That's from Romans 1, 24, 28. And that's the King James. So all kinds of things happen when they go into perversion. Eleanor asks, people talk about aliens. What is their relationship with demons? I had a guy working for me whose brother-in-law works at Area 51. Top secret, can't talk. This guy who worked for me asked his brother-in-law, what about the alien thing? He said... The stealth bomber is our most advanced technology that the American public is aware of and it was developed 30 years ago. What do you think they have now? So there you go for all your alien buffs. I think the alien thing is a cover scheme made up by these Area 51 people. The second thing I notice is that most of the people who believe in aliens say that their first abduction occurred around three years of age. There are so many similarities to occult ritual abuse that whenever you put together sodomy and ritual abuse the demons are going to be layered in. They give you a new mindset at three years of age. The fantasy world. This is what the whole alien thing is about. There is no such thing as aliens from other planets. There's demons. So Eleanor asks, how do you picture where demons live? The demon is a figment of your mind. It lives in your mind. Is its origin in your mind as well? You take a three-year-old child, untouched. Some day, somebody sodomizes the child. The guy's name is Joe. Now all of a sudden, the child has a sodomy demon called Joseph riding with him. That thing was conceived or reproduced from the Joseph demon that the man had who sodomized that child. Where did it come from? It was birthed in the child's mind by the act. It didn't have to come from anywhere. It just was birthed, reproduced right there. The child was given a copy. Joe is like a copy machine that can reproduce another copy. I don't feel all demons are that way, but, the, the, but that kind are. They don't live in the bloodstream. They don't live in the genes. They live in the mind. Eleanor asks, is sodomy worse than incest? A lot of the incest that occurs, that is occurring, is sodomy. I've heard that in Mexico, Mexican fathers sodomize their daughters to be able to control them and bond them to the family. But they don't give them vaginal sex, so they can preserve them as virgins for their husbands. What a crock of bull. I'm convinced that Muslim hatred for non-Muslims comes from sodomy. Their rage has to come from sodomy. I've heard that sodomy is rampant among Muslims, but I thought it was because of the laws that support revenge against men who ad make advances on women. That is Muslim law, is what makes them turn to boys. But you think it's more than that? Of course. Why would any normal man turn to boys, even with those laws? 
I would not turn to boys. So men are conditioned because they're sodomized as children. I think so. One guy I know knew a Saudi who said that over there the women are for children and men are for love. The violence and hatred in that kind of stuff is produced by sodomy. It produces the internal rage. The massive build-up of Star Wars type technology, way beyond anything that they're using for international policing, is being developed in order to, fe to defeat Jesus Christ so the sodomites can take over the world. Satan can't do it, so he's using men to come up with the idea to try and do it. I know that what I'm saying is tremendously radical, but in the end, the Lord Jesus Christ will win. So that is the end of the interview. Um, and what you've got to understand is this act is called the key of David. Yeah. And, it, and we can just look at one little uh, piece from Isaiah. And it says, I will lay the key of the house of David on his shoulder. What he opens, no man shall shut, and what he shuts, no man shall open. He shall be a seat of honour for his family's family, sorry, his father's family. I will fasten him firmly in place like a peg. On him shall hang all the weight of the family, down to the lowest dregs, all the little vessels, both bowls and pots. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg which is firmly fastened in its place shall be removed. It shall be hacked out and shall fall. And the Lord of things hanging on it shall be destroyed. The Lord has spoken. So, what they're basically saying is, you look at the Bible and take it in its higher context, its allegorical context and its symbolic context. And what you're actually getting from a lot of the words of Jesus is acting against this system that gets created through sodomy. And, and, and as I've said before in a couple of videos, it's that the bond that's created between men when they start to practice this, that's what separates them as a group. It doesn't matter whether they're Freemasons, Jesuits, whatever they're into, as soon as they start doing that, whatever group they're in, they become separate from that because the bond is this uh, sodomy. And it's the same with the special forces, it's the same with the elites of any craft. They're the sodomites. They are separated from you. You're in the organisation as a front in general terms, unless you show yourself willing to enter into the real brotherhood, which is sodomy. I'll leave that there, and uh, I'll speak soon. Bye.